Hope is a small town surrounded by towering mountains and an abundance of wildlife. Formed in 2005, the Hope Arts Council's goal was to promote arts and culture by offering affordable arts programming and cultural activities. An art walk map is also available that guides you around the community of Hope to look at local artwork, such as the wooden chainsaw carvings, local gardens, and the Hope's history board. The gallery's recent exhibition displays local artists, paintings, drawings, sculptures, pottery, clothing, jewelry, draperies, and more. Hope is rich in its abundance of nature and wildlife, and such a feeling is echoed in the gallery through the forms and materials created by each artist. There is a wide variety of styles to enjoy, from driftwood sculptures, a birch tree vase, paintings with plastic mesh, to a ceramic fawn. With so many different things to look at and the calming natural atmosphere, visitors might find the experience meditative or relaxing. A few that caught my attention were Jan Kina's Nano Felting and Eco Dyeing with Natural Leaves and Plants, Jackie Coughlin's Pine Needles and Sweet Grass Baskets, and Jenny Wolpert's exploratory work through paint, ceramics, textiles, and much more. Jan uses a process called nino felting, which involves the layering of wool to create a thin textured fabric. Then using eco dyeing, Jan creates these natural flowing patterns of leaves, flowers, and plants. Jackie partners with a wood turner who creates the base of the bowls so she can create these intricately woven pieces using just pine needles or sweet grass. Local artist Michelle Franklin works with an ancient weaving technique called null binding. Predating knitting, traces of null binding have been found and dated to be from as early as the Bronze and Early Iron Ages, and was popular with Vikings, Asian, European, and North African cultures. Null binding requires one needle, traditionally made from bone. I had the pleasure of chatting with Michelle about her processes and inspirations. She buys her own wool from auction and cleans, cards, dyes, and spins it all by hand using her own hand-carved bone needle. The practice comes very intuitively for her. As she says, Some days I spin and spin, but I never know what it will transform into until I see all my yarn laid out and then it all comes together. She creates beautiful hats, scarves, and shawls with a null-binding stitch called the Oslo which was named after an 11th century mitten found in Oslo excavations. Her hats have been featured in a Mongolian museum exhibit, the Buxton Museum Viking exhibit in Derbyshire, the New York Historical Society, and even worn in a Viking film called The Final Battle of Gratir the Strong. Michelle learned this Nordic technique from the Society for Creative Anachronism, an organization that teaches passionate historians and artists about pre-17th century skills, arts, culture, and combats, such as archery, metalworking, calligraphy, fiber arts, and more. The community keeps these medieval practices alive while they learn and help others to appreciate these processes with new understanding. Similarly, together the artists of hope keep their traditions and history alive through their own creativity.